just starting to acknowledge what this individual did. Kevin's the guy who, who basically made sure that the music got to masses. Uh, is one of the coolest guys I know, the most down-to-earth person I know, um, especially considering what he's done for the music and, and uh, the things that he's into. And, and I have so much, a lot of respect for what he did with Inner City. And, and uh, I mean, he was one of the first guys who had like a crossover hit. Uh, he sold, I don't know how many records, six million records worldwide or something like that. Um, he, he is uh, obviously the most successful commercially successful out of, out of all of them. Kevin, on the other end, was the first person who gave me a name to put on the record. Kevin, Kevin spanks. When he starts bumping, it's, it's a spanking. And you just start screaming more, you know? My influences were uh, pretty broad, I, I think, um, but dance-wise, disco-related stuff, stuff with a consistent pulse always seemed to, to grab my attention more. I remember we, we did a club on a Monday night called Spectrum Reporter for many years ago, and one of the biggest records was, uh, was, was Good Life. I have to say my career really started about 1983. The reason I think I started is because of Derek, Derek May. Let me clear this up real quick. Kevin told you that he, he took me down back in the day, right? You know, okay. We, we had a little fight uh, before we became friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we met. He, Derek used to get on my nerves, basically. He was, you know, just, he was always off with the mouth. Fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, he beat me up. And uh, I beat him up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, let me see. I, I can't really top that because, because that did happen. But the circumstances weren't as he told them, whatever he might have, may have told you. He actually tapped me on the shoulder, and when I turned around, he punched me. So it wasn't as if we were out in the yard, two guys going at it, and he took me down. This guy, this bigger than me guy, okay, knew everybody in the school knew he was gonna do it. So he walked up to me, he tapped me on the shoulder, because I think we had bet on the Super Bowl. And I decided I wasn't gonna pay him. You know? So uh, he tapped me on the shoulder, I turned around and he socked me in the nose and hit me in the mouth. He knocked me out, you know? That's right, but somehow from that, I don't know how it's possible, but we became best friends. Became the best of friends, which is amazing. I think, you know, he said, I'm just not gonna say nothing about this guy anymore. You know, I was big too. Fucking Kevin, you should kill him. Man. But see now I'm, you know, you know, I'm a little bit quicker and faster than him now. You know, so I can get inside and boom, boom, boom. Isn't that strange? Isn't that weird? This guy gave me a concussion. You know, at the at the at the tender age of 14. You know. <laughs> Juan was making records, and Derek made his first record. Then I wanted to make music too. Kevin was able to, to put a lot of hybrids into a style. You know, he wasn't he wasn't seen as just being, you know, this kind of techno guy. He did house, he did, um, you know, vocal things. He did all kinds of stuff, and he went a lot uh, further uh, creatively, I believe, than, than what Derek and Juan have been able to do. So I, I went from being underground to having commercial success, I think because of the timing, because of the vision, because of the sound. It was a lot of things that played 
uh, important roles in that success. Um, Super nice guy. Anyone could walk up and talk to Kevin and have a conversation with him. You know, without him, I think that the techno wouldn't be anywhere that, that it is now.